Hey guys. How are you guys today? I am just out for a drive. I had to drop something off at the post office, little drop box. And I figured that I would check in with you guys. So hopefully everyone is good. I, um, I am super excited because tomorrow I have a haircut early in the morning and then I thought that I would put off my errands that I need to run until tomorrow just so that I can make a video of my day. I don't think it'll be a true like day in the life or like a full day vlog, but we'll see. It might be because I have a couple things that I need to take care of tomorrow and my haircut and so yeah we'll see but today I want to talk to you guys because um, one of my subscribers sent me a video that sort of sent me down a rabbit hole I was honestly really shocked by what I discovered you guys know um, you guys know the channel Death Noodles. I'm sure you do. He has a ton of subscribers. He's a commentary channel. He, you know, kind of, he kind of cloaks his content under the umbrella of satire, which there's been some people that have issues with that because the whole thing is, is it's a, it's a interesting line to try to walk doing commentary and comedy or satire because it can come off as distasteful and if you're gonna do satire then don't call yourself commentary or news it's an interesting sort of subtopic of commentary channels and you know if you guys are wondering how I feel about satire it's not the way that I like to consume content um you know I I think that satire had its time and in my opinion, it's time was the early days of SNL, but I also am one of those people that is, I'm also one of those people that looks at it like, just allow early SNL to be iconic. Allow it to stay there and be iconic. And, you know, it's very, in my opinion, basically impossible to try to replicate the um, comedic gold that is old SNL. But that's just how I feel about it. So either way, um, so one of you guys sent me this video of someone calling out Deaf Noodles. And I only somewhat recently discovered Deaf Noodles. You know, his real name is Dennis. I'll just call him Dennis in this video. So I only recently discovered him. And I don't watch all of his videos. I watch some of them. I know that he has completely gone overboard with the coverage of David Dobrik, um, James Charles. He's done a lot of content about. And I think that those are both topics that deserve to have light shed on them. But after realizing that Dennis has a history of reporting false information and not correcting it. Now I'm looking at his coverage of David Dobrik and James Charles, specifically James Charles. I'm looking at it in a different light and I am not sure that I can trust everything that he says now. And I've voiced that concern when it comes to Without a crystal ball, I've given her a ton of criticism when it comes to calling herself a journalist, not reporting, you know, the stories with 100% accuracy, and never admitting when she's wrong, never coming back and correcting herself. And that's a huge problem. You know, it's a problem with mainstream media, it's a problem with 
um, internet media, commentary channels, drama channels. But you do have some commentary channels. If they have integrity, they have no problem correcting themselves when they're wrong. I've had to correct myself a couple of times, and I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone else, but it's something that you really have to own up to when you decide to do commentary. If you have something wrong, just come back and correct it. Say that you got it wrong. You will have so much more respect from your audience if you correct yourself and own your mistakes than if you act like they never happened or even worse if you just deny the facts when they're brought to your attention. So this video that I was sent I will leave down below in my description box. It is somewhat lengthy but you can watch it at one and a half times speed and get through it a little bit faster if this is something that interests you. If you are a subscriber of Dennis then this might be something that interests you. It was very eye-opening for me and you know I haven't unsubscribed from the Deaf Noodles channel as of right now. Um, however, if I see that this is a pattern of behavior, then where is the value in the content? I've always looked at it that way and I've said, um, you know, I'll just use Katie Joy as an example because it just makes sense. If you are subscribing to a channel to obtain information about a certain topic, but that information cannot be trusted, then where is the value in the information? Because I come to YouTube channels to take in information and hear people's opinions on things But I also want to be able to know that I'm basing my opinions off of things that are actually true. I've actually noticed this a lot. My God, it's hot. Um, I've noticed this quite a lot with commentary channels. Not all of them, but there, there have been a few where it seems like commentary channels a lot of times want to be first to break certain stories. And therefore, they forego doing the proper amount of research into said topic. Because if they have to spend a day or two digging into a topic, then they're a day or two behind breaking said story. And you know, I love doing commentary, but the one thing that I've realized from early on was you have to be willing to do a little bit of your own homework because commentary is the one section of YouTube, commentary, drama, T channels, that whole cluster of content and content creators, those are the first people that can be, you know, smacked with a lawsuit and end up in court for defamation. And whether or not someone is familiar with the without a crystal ball lawsuit, defamation is still something that nobody wants to have to go through. That's just like a nightmare. That is a true nightmare and there are ways to protect yourself from possibly ending up in a situation like that and one of them is taking that time to do a little bit of research and you know if it's something that requires a lot of research and I don't have five days to dig into something, then I'm not going to make the video. It's pretty simple. And it can be so tempting for people to um, just do that. And if that's what they want to do, then fine. But the other thing that was in this video 
that I thought was interesting. My God, it's hot. The other thing that was in this video that I thought was very interesting, you guys probably know, I don't have Twitter. I don't have Twitter intentionally because to me, Twitter is just sort of a cesspool of toxicity and it's it's the one social media platform that I've never had interest in. So, I mean, if you have Twitter and you like it, that's awesome. But for me, from the get-go, I was never interested in having a Twitter. So, evidently, Deaf Noodle's account on Twitter is proven to block people so easily it's shocking and I've talked before about feedback and criticism and you know I I will own the fact all day that I delete comments I delete comments like if if you are coming to my channel like I'll give you guys an example when I covered the um self-taught beauty thing early on there were people who came to my channel and were literally telling me to go to hell and that I would pay for my sins by I guess my sins were talking about Mandy um, and just all this crazy stuff I would delete those comments because that's not adding to the conversation that's not spreading knowledge or opening my eyes to look at something a different way. So I delete comments. I own that. Um, however, they were showing on a couple of these videos that I watched about Dennis that he blocks people so easily that if you are not, if you're not congratulating him or telling him how amazing he is, he will block you. So it could just be, hey, I don't think you should do this. Maybe you should do this instead and he'll block you. Like there's receipts of that all over the place and I had no idea of that. You know, it's funny because that reminds me of a few other YouTubers that just, if you're not in the echo chamber, you're blocked, which it's so much more work blocking people than just letting them leave their comment if they have valid criticism or some feedback, just leave their comment. Who cares? Don't read your comments. If it's that upsetting for you, don't read your comments. It's not that serious. Like, but like I said, if, you know, someone's coming to your channel and cussing you out and telling you to go to hell, then, you know, every creator looks at it differently. But that's just how I see it. But yeah, he blocks people very, very easily and he will seek out commenters on like his detractors Twitter pages and he will block those people so he's like a step ahead of the game what sir you are literally not even hiding it that well anymore and I just kind of thought of it and I'm sitting there like, I have gotten on without a crystal ball so many times for the behaviors that she has shown online. And sure enough, who knew that Deaf Noodles had so many similarities to Katie Joy? I, um, like I said, I didn't unsubscribe from his channel but if I keep seeing these videos come out like I'm already at the point where the content that I consume on his channel I can't really take it for um, face value because I don't know if it's gonna come out tomorrow that it's a lie that he just hasn't corrected so I don't know what do you guys think about this what do you think of commentary channels that don't correct themselves when they're wrong and 
block people that aren't in their echo chamber walk the line of defamation all the time. What do you guys think about this? I cannot wait to hear from you guys. A lot of what I've seen is people are overly sensitive. If you are an overly sensitive person and you want to make a YouTube channel, that's something that you should really think about before you just jump on and make a channel, in my opinion. Because YouTube can be YouTube can be a pretty rough place sometimes for those who are sensitive and don't like to see negative comments about themselves. Before I came on YouTube, you know, I had I had fair skin. Like I, I don't I didn't have thick skin, but I didn't have thin skin. I do feel like it was made a little bit better the years like right after high school because of kind of what I went through during that time. So it made me a little bit, a little bit tougher, but I do think that coming on YouTube will do one of two things for you. It will either make you more sensitive and you'll be one of those who builds an echo chamber and blocks people and all of these kinds of things. Or it will make your thin or it will make your skin thicker than what it was before you had your channel. And I do feel like that's what it's done for me. Um, nobody likes to see negative things about themselves online. However, in the back of your mind, something that I always remember something that I always try to remind myself is that these people who make vile, nasty comments about your appearance or just bring up things that are completely irrelevant to offering criticism, these are extremely miserable people. These people are very sad in their own lives. They are absolutely just, they have zero self-esteem and all that they can do is rip on other people through their keyboard or through their camera and annihilate people for any and everything that should not be mentioned or criticized online. So that's something that you know, if, if you, if someone watching this happens to have a channel of their own, and you know, maybe you're just starting out, just realize that the people who are, you know, because eventually everyone will get either negative comments or negative videos made about them. Just try to keep in the back of your mind that if, if the person isn't offering valid criticism, they are most likely deflecting their own lack of self-esteem and lack of morals onto you. And you got to just let it roll off your back. Like, you know, stand up for yourself, but do not allow what people are doing on the internet and saying about you within reason, don't allow it to affect your life outside of YouTube. You know, I, I think that we've all had to make those videos standing up for ourselves and addressing rumors or just straight up lies. But do not allow these people to you know, 
ruin your day that you might be able to enjoy with your family or loved ones or even just by yourself. It is not worth it. Trust me. I'm ready to get my hair cut. So anyway, um, yeah, that's the whole thing with Dennis, a.k.a. Deaf Noodles. Um, it, it's just very odd to me. I do feel like, I don't know, a part of me doesn't even feel like I should be a subscriber anymore. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, just because someone who is literally doing commentary all day and all night on their channel, that's all that he does. And then to see some of these small criticisms that people have given him and they're blocked. I don't know. To me, that sounds like hypocrisy 101. So either way, you guys, um, I'm going to make my way home and get some lunch. I'm starving. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.